shown up yet so let's let's do some business um one can we turn the lights so we can see these thank you you want me to call and say i guess we can show you you can just show the on my phone drive when it says amendment. As you know, you got your emails last week. Uh, Harold has proposed an amendment to the bylaws. And the only reason he's proposing it is because the bylaws themselves say we have to we have two separate accounts, two separate bank accounts. Harold's idea is one would make it a little simple. Uh, but when we get it up on the screen, you can see what we're talking about. Yep. As you see, the current language says 20% of the budget shall be used for long-term purchases, separate set aside in a separate account each January of each year. Harold, we like it to say 20% of the budget shall be set aside for long-term purchases. Note this portion of the budget cannot be spent without approval. It's up for grabs. Any discussion? Anybody have any thoughts other than those that have been bandied about on the web? Ed. Yeah, um, I guess my, you know, coming from an accounting background, it's a uh, separate account. It's not say separate bank account. So, I mean, I could read that, for example, say separate, you know, account, uh, a separate ledger account. It's not necessarily a separate bank account. So, you know, I don't think, Carol, I don't think we need a change in the bylaws in order for Harold to transfer the amounts from what has been a long-term account into the current into the current account and close out that was the current account. Uh, the other thing, and I was just talking with Harold and Ray before, uh, there was you know, a conversation in that email exchange about you know how much and you know when do we need and when we might expect to um, replace the current computer like I said um, I think that it would be good for us to you know take a take an overall view of the budgeting process for you know Harold and a couple other people to get together, review the budgeting process, which has uh, been in place for a number of years, but I think we're a little bit different than we are now as, as, a, as a club. And then come back in a couple of months with a proposal uh, for a new budgeting process. Those, the budget also says, or it's in the bylaws, it suggests a percentage allocation mm -hmm. for a number of different accounts. And you know, right now, for example, and it's a suggestion. It's it's not carved in stone that we have to spend these amounts for these particular purposes. But for example, the allocation to miscellaneous photocopying and stuff like that is now three hundred dollars, and that's just not realistic. So not, not that we couldn't, or Harold couldn't, as a treasurer, redo the budget as the years go by, but I think to have something in a more realistic light would be 
good to explore the I think we can reduce that to maybe $50. Yeah. Just take it out of the budget, and not move it. Yeah, that's where it looks like it. Yeah. So, and also, and I'm not sure how this comes about. I guess we had the roll, you know, on, on rollovers amounts that we had to spend in the prior year are added to uh, the budget for the current year. Tim, could you show the other one that says uh, well, we budget? Budget yeah. there. just rolls over yeah. to the other. Tim, could you expand on how the clubs, because it was in the club about four years ago that it was changed? There you go. No, no, it's love when I was there. It was before. I was there when it happened. Eight years ago. Yeah, yeah it was before I became president. Well, if you look at this That's slide, this is a little. This is a. If you look at this slide, okay. we've got more of an issue than just transferring money. Okay. You can see this. Uh, we have thirty-two members signed up at the moment. That's not enough. Our budget exceeds our dues income for the year. We are counting on carryover to make up the difference. If we spend our entire budget, we will have only about $700 to carry over to next year. That might leave us a little tight going into the 225 budget and leave a very low carryover for 2026. Depending on the size of the membership, we may want to think about a dues increase and or budget adjustments. We need to be somewhat conservative in our spending and try to push our membership closer to the 50 limit. This was sent to me on Friday by Harold, who also sent me along a list of those who have not paid their dues yet this year. And it is a significant portion of their membership. They have until March 1st. I will take it on myself to write each individual an email saying, please, hand me up the circle. And, um, but I thought this is, this is a more, to me, more concerning issue than moving money or another thing. It's just we need some more members or higher dues if we're going to keep the, keep the budget the way we are now. That's that. But I thought the budget was based on percentages, not hard dollar numbers. So if it were $50 or $100, it's a percentage of that. It, I mean, isn't that right? I don't know. I, yeah, yeah, I actually looked at the numbers first and the percentages came out to be where they were. Kind of been along with the guidance in the bylaws close to that, but I adjusted, looked at the amount. Some of the amounts have slower changed. Well, you're here. Last said that Daryl will track this throughout the year and keep us informed. Uh, and our, our, our first job, which I, as I said, I'll the memo people. And there's a significant number who have not yet paid their dues and they have to work first. We already know one or two who are not re upping. So, uh, but I just thought you should know this. Uh, Peter, the way you set it up, the, 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 the amount available in any given year, we already know exactly what we have to spend in this based on the income in the prior year. Whatever we took in in 2023, what we have to spend in 2024. We have recommended percentages, recommended percentages, which can always be adjusted, but we can never, we know exactly what we have to spend. We can't be over, um, it's based, and anything we don't spend simply carries over to the following year if we haven't even enough dough. If we know oh, yeah. that's what we have to spend, we have suggested percentages, and as as Ed suggested, maybe we need to review those suggested percentages, but we can never be quote over budget because we know exactly what we have to spend. Okay. Well, I just thought about the open work. There's no no acting required. It's just uh, yeah, yeah. Really, okay. 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 The how to move the money from one account to the other. Probably not, but I don't think so. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant. But if, if it makes our treasurer feel better, well, it really doesn't matter. It's going to make it easier for the mayor to teach us about money. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not arguing with that point. I think it's one of the question is do we need an amendment to buy it? It's not, but if they want it, Okay, I mean, I can go either way. Right, how many of the chances for trade? Oh. 
I think I think Pat had a good comment on the Yeah. Um, my comment was that there was a reference above the the clause that we're talking about amending that refers to accounts and books. And then when you refer to accounts down below, it would seem to imply that that it wouldn't be just like a bookkeeping entry. I if I were the treasurer, I would feel you're right. more <laughs> I would feel that the bylaws are clearer and then I would not be subject to criticism for not having a separate bank account. So I don't think changing the bylaws is hard. So if it makes it clearer, why not do it? All right. You actually my thoughts on it. <laughs> I remember back at the time when we still had a rich club, but when we were poor. The intent, intent was two bank accounts. And thus we have actually two checkbooks. Yeah. Checkbook for capital, checkbook for, for operating. Um, I'm okay with either, but I know the intent is the back when we did it was two bank accounts. I, I don't have a particular issue. Uh, but as Pat says, seems safer, clear. With the two buckets. But I don't disagree. <laughs> and and just to be clear, I don't I don't mind only the idea of only having one account. I just think it's it's clear the bylaws are clearer if they're written the way that Harold suggested. Which is not up right now. Yeah. Well, okay. Let's uh so Harold, would you like to make a motion to change the bylaws? Or I'll go ahead and make a motion. So and Harold is going to make a motion to change the bylaws so that we have one account. Anybody second the motion? I'll second. Okay. Who seconded? Right. All in, all in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, that's fast. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, just a bit of the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Can we officially declare this works now? <laughs> this meeting is now old. Let's go. Uh, two. Throw out one more thing. Uh, and talk about somewhere in the future, maybe. Rethink the budget. Yep. I would just like to suppose that if we do get to that point where we rethink the budget, I would like Nancy to put it. Does the president have the prerogative of appointing a committee or do we ask for volunteers? Uh, either one, I think you can you can volunteer people or you can have volunteers. Uh, we we did a committee uh, when we were looking to revise the insurance or get insurance. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. One Two, three. Oh, I would like to have also here uh, a new somebody who joined the club since COVID, a new person. Okay. So can we ask for a volunteer? A somebody volunteer. who's joined the club in the last two years. Okay, Okay, this this will right here. Here's the second. And you thought to be in the back of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this this role is now a committee, an ad hoc committee, to look at the budget process and come back with some recommendations at some point. Okay. It's not so big, it's we the void. Okay, thank you all. Okay. And now Sue. Kim, are we are we good to however we do this? Yeah, okay. okay. Sure, yeah, get a sound on, check. On him for the yeah. Yeah. Hello, hello, baby. See, that's it. Okay. okay. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Okay. Um, I first met our guest speaker at uh, the Bright Point Awards ceremony last year. 
And it wasn't so much that I noticed a speaker, but it was his equipment, you know, how it is like, whoa, that looks great, or whatever. And the equipment had a lot of miles on it. So I went, wow. And I soon learned that his client list includes um, not only Bright Point, but VCU University of Richmond, the Boston Globe, New York Times, NBC, Martin Agency, many more. His photography has taken him around the world to Iraq, Kosovo, Afghanistan, and Panama. Our speaker offers decades of award-winning imagery with his editorial, corporate, and lifestyle photography. Please welcome today's guest, photojournalist Clement Fritz. <laughs> Uh, I'm run through my run through my slideshow. Please ask me questions. I got some show and tell. Uh, please ask me some questions. Um, I started the TV in '75 as a copy boy, back when you could say those kinds of things, <laughs> and in '70. Seven uh, went to the photo department as a lab tech part time. Did that for almost two years, two and a half years. Got on the street. Uh, that became full time. Got on the street in eighty eighty, I think, and was on the staff. Well, was a photographer. Uh, back in the day, you were on the street or you were in the lab. I was in, on the street from 80 until I was laid off in 2009. Uh, if you want, I can talk for the next hour or so and just complain about where newspapers are today. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> and I guess whew, five or so years after I start, after I got on the street, Middle 80s, the newspaper industry struck struck oil, they struck gold, they found unicorns, I don't know what, but they um, all of a sudden they had money and they were throwing money at us. And that's where some of that travel came from. Um, it was it was great. It's probably the it was one of the heydays. Of, of newspaper in the United States, newspaper journalists, just journalists, magazines, people were going everywhere. Um, nobody knew it, but well, whatever year Craigslist, Craigslist came out, y'all remember Craigslist, and I don't know what year that was. That was, that's what, that kneecapped newspapers. Because that's where classified ad sales went. When that happened, classified ad sales keeps the lights on in the newspaper. Everything else is great. Um, all those big display ads from Sidney and Hundley, mm -hmm. grocery stores, um, uh, elections, election season, the money that the campaigns throw at newspapers. But Craigslist, if you want to date, Craigslist was the the, the kneecap newspaper. Yeah. I can't hear that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, do we do a uh, speaker or or just move up a little bit? Oh, okay. A second. Oh, if okay. if I turn that volume up, there's going to be a delay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Because. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm I'm I can hold. I can hold. How's that? That's not bad. Okay. Okay. Craigslist. Kneecap newspapers. Um, uh, everybody from Richmond, been in Richmond a while? Yeah. I grew up, I'm from Richmond, grew up in the North Side. Um, 50s and 60s, you had to buy the newspaper. You could not be, you could not function. You, you, you couldn't function in the community. I grew up getting my uh, uh, Getting the Times Dispatch into News Leader every day. I was a newspaper reader before I knew what I wanted to do. I still don't know what I want to do with my life. Um, 
I read the newspaper every day. I don't, excuse me, I looked at the newspaper every day, every single page of the paper, and it became a ritual. Morning paper, whenever I got to it. If I didn't get to, to the Times Dispatch until 10 o'clock at night, I looked at that before I looked at the newspaper. Every single page, every day. <clears throat> until I couldn't stand it anymore. I looked at every single page of the paper, every single page. Papers consolidated, only the Times Dispatch. I can't remember, I don't remember the years. Y'all are from Richmond, y'all been in Richmond a while. You know the Paper Moon strip clubs? And however you know it. <laughs> there's one on Broad, there's one on Midlow. That's all I know. The Paper Moon strip clubs on page three or four every Wednesday or Thursday, one column ad about three inches deep. And that ad showed, showed you, told you what dancer was coming to Richmond for the weekend. Helen Bed, Lena Wayback, whoever was coming, to Richmond, <laughs> was coming to Richmond that weekend to do her show. It was there like clockwork. You could set your calendar. Forget your watch. You could set your calendar to that ad. And then one day I noticed that ad was gone. It wasn't in the paper. A couple of years later, I realized, I don't know where they were sending them that, but the newspaper was no longer a viable platform for them to advertise. When you lose strip clubs, <laughs> when you lose strip clubs, it's over. <laughs> um, uh, back up. In high school, uh, I got put in the wrong class in high school. I signed up, I almost walked to 10th grade. Uh, and I I staggered my way. Didn't know what I wanted to do except the only thing I was certain of was I didn't want to go to college. I knew that. I knew that I couldn't stand it. It was just, I couldn't have gone. I couldn't have gone after high school. I signed up for art JC in my that you know springtime of your 11th grade, the springtime of the school year, you sign up for what you want to take the next year. I signed up for Art JC. Because of my poor penmanship, I got put in Art AC. Art AC was by invitation only. The best art students in school. I got put in the class. I knew it. Why am I here? I didn't know it wasn't the jewelry class. I, I signed up to make jewelry. <laughs> and I just, again, you needed a lake. I, I was in the wrong class. I knew it. I also knew keep your mouth shut until the teacher's finished and send it to the office with a piece of paper. Go where you're supposed to want to go. Bud Haley was his name, Thomas Jefferson. Mr. Haley said he was going to put a dark on in our class, in the classroom. TJ had these, uh, had closets in the back of the room, sliding panels, sliding panels that the closet was behind them. Oh man, I must have been 15, 18 feet wide. Two big door, two big wooden doors and they had chalkboards on each door. He was gonna put the dark room in that. He said, oh, I'll put a dark room in this year. I'm going to put it in the closet. I, 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 I was probably 10, 12 feet in the class, and he knew all of them except me. Class was over, went up to him, told him what happened. He knew I didn't belong there. I knew I didn't belong there. But I said, But you said you're going to put a dark room back there. Can I? Can I stay? And he, yeah, sure. Basic, you know, every class has your basic requirements, whatever that is. You're supposed to be this proficient in math, this proficient in whatever the subject is. You were supposed to do, based by the senior year, you were supposed to be able to draw a hand, 
throw a figure, throw a base, whatever. He didn't let he didn't make me do that because all I did was spend, I was the only one who was full time in the dark. I love it. I, I can still remember the first picture I had in Shimborazo Park, foggy day, the tree in the that's special. But I still I still remember. Go back even further. My brother comes home from Vietnam with a Pentax spot bag. We got Life magazine every week. Scared that you know what out of me. Because my brother was in Vietnam and I'm looking at these pictures from Vietnam and it scared the dude out of me. But that's when I first, <laughs> that's when I first <clears throat> recognized, saw, well, maybe began to understand the talk. You guys know who Larry Burroughs is? Yes. Larry Burroughs, first photographer I ever used. The first name before Cardi ever saw him, before Eddie Adams, before, before, before you said or whoever. Larry Burroughs. I used to play with his camera. Go into his bedroom. I would go in, there you go. I would go into his bedroom and just monkey around with that camera, turn the dials. And listen to the shutter and again understand. I didn't know what that little hole was. And why the hole got small and why the hole got big, but I knew the hole got small, I knew the hole got big. <laughs> Screw mount lens. I fell in love with the tool. I bet you my brother put three rolls of film through there now. The old time he had. I don't know where it is. My sister in law, he passed away for two years. My sister in law. She got, you live long enough, you're gonna get a file crap. Somewhere <laughs> on that file crap is a brand new, damn near brand spanking new Pentex Spotmatic. Anyway, I had that when I asked him to stay in class. He let me stay in. I I am not BS y'all. I barely graduated. I mean, I barely graduated. The only reason I the only reason I graduated is because I didn't want to repeat the year. I'm the, I'm the third of I'm the last of three. Your parents, by the time you get to the last kid, your parents know what you're doing. They can coast and not <laughs> they know you're better, you know, you'll be all right. And I'm not saying she was a, a, an absent parent or anything like that, but I also know. My brother, my sister, she's the oldest, she got more attention from our parents just because they didn't know what they were doing. By the time I come along, actually, it was <laughs> I, and I think she kind of given up too. <laughs> she had insisted that my brother and sister go to public. She failed with all three of us, but she didn't fight me the same way she fought my brother and sister. I did just enough graduation. I had been, I was at 300 and something. My class rank was 300 and something out of 342. I, I didn't hate school. I hated being in school. But all my friends were there and fun. I was not, I was just a kid in the crowd. It wasn't bad. I, I, but I, God, there I hated school. <laughs> just enough. To graduate, and that's just just how much work I put into. It. I'm in the you get we got a free period or something. Go to the guidance office. Oh shit! Man. It looks like his career drawings, and one was labeled photography. And pull it open, and there's a single little book from the Rhode Island School of Photography. Mm. <laughs> I. I copied all the information, wrote off, got the information, showed it to my mother. Uh, she figured out that we could afford it. And she could afford it. Uh, <laughs> went off to Providence the summer of 73, Providence, Rhode Island. Rhode Island School of Photography was a trade school. Taught you how to be a commercial photographer or a wedding photographer. That was their strength. They touched on journalism, 
put the back. Not that good. Um, I got a strong dark room foundation there. Um, I knew chemistry. I was taught chemistry. I was taught physics. I was taught a little bit about the mechanics of cameras. How much I learned is another. How much I retained is another. Got out of that. Had a friend who was a copy boy from the time of suspension, 1975. First school year, school, first school year in Rhode Island was black and white. Second year was color. We we learned how to print color. Make color prints, develop color prints. Uh, I come back home, 75, no job. Uh, I I never considered newspapers. Just wasn't, I didn't know what I wanted. Applied for some jobs. Um, the first one to call me back was uh, uh, CNP Telephone. And you know, you, you're 20 years old, you just talk. I don't want to, I just applied to put the application. In. I had no idea what what what. The guy, the person on the phone offered me a job. He went around to pay phones. And he said, I remember he said the thing weighed like 40 pounds with all the corners. <laughs> but you took this, remember it's pay phones, there's a big chrome box. You lift up this box, you jam it in that chrome plate. And that screw in the chrome plate, something in that box triggered that screw, would make that plate flop open. All the coins would drop into that box, and that box was sealed. So, you, you know, if you stole a box, you'd have to dial behind you get the coins. <laughs> okay, I took that job. I said yes to the guy. I don't know that. Before I was supposed to start, my friend Kevin Brown, he was a copy boy. Kevin and I grew up together. He grew up across the street. Kevin retired as a judge. <laughs> I retired as a newspaper photographer. So he's what Kevin had going on. <laughs> Kevin said, hey, I'm quitting. I'm going. Kevin was, uh, he was going to be a junior at Hampton Institute. Kevin said, hey, I'm quitting. You want me, you want me to see if they won't, you want me to see if, you know, maybe you know, you can probably get my job. I don't know, but you probably could. <laughs> yeah. And again, I don't know nothing. I, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Easiest job I ever got. Terry Bear. You want, when you want to start, that was, that was the entire, that was the entire interview. Uh, became a copy boy on and off. 34 years, I got my math right. I did not suspect from the, I don't know, you look back at the history of newspapers, maybe one of the peaks in terms of output, in terms of production, in terms of what they were doing to the world, for the world, um, <clears throat> until the legs got knocked out from under it, and it's where it is today. Please ask me some questions. Um, I guess I'll show y'all some pictures. Um, this is my website. Here, can I? Oh, I make it bigger. We um we were general assigned, with the exception of um, the general assembly. One person covered the general assembly all session long because you needed to know who the people were. You needed to know what was going on, and the, the best way to do that would be to go in every day, every day, no players, no This house. Yeah. I'll take care of that. Uh, that Senate subcommittee, whatever. 
Other than that, we were all gentlemen, sir. Uh, except Bruce Parker, on his own initiative, covered the Redskins, covered all the Redskins' home games. Otherwise, we had, we had, we had six ships spread out over, <laughs> And it's peak spread out over 11 people. 7 to 4, 8 to 5, 9 to 6, 12 to 9, 1 to 10, 2 to 11. That covered the day for both newspapers. Sundays, uh, three people, 2 12 to 9s, 1 1 to 10. It worked five days. Uh, the way it was set up every three weeks, you got Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday off. Otherwise, yeah, every other every other week you had split days off. But y'all know from your work lives, you work in it, you live in it, you understand. Um, and by being general assignment and working those kinds of hours, you're likely to get anything from press conference. At the governor's mansion, uh, I went to Tech. I went to Virginia Tech with David Shu, and I don't know where the boss was. Bob Brown was the assistant director, and I'm sitting at a terminal. And Brown comes in, and we, you know, we didn't have a TV or anything. We had a scanning room. We didn't have a TV or anything. And I was, I didn't have a, a news kind of thing. Oh. Looking at the, uh, looking at our, we, are, we had desktop machines. Look at the computer for whatever. And Brown comes in and says, hey, you're going to tech. And it's a weekday. Not Saturday. And it was a set, you know, you know on Thursday you're going to tech for a football game. You know two, two days before if you had to go to tech. Or football or basketball or whatever, so you could get the rest of your life straight, make make accommodations for your kids, your daycare, whatever you needed to do. He walked in there and he said, "Hey, you're going to tech." I said, "Well, what? how come?" And he said, "He said there, there's, there's been a shooting." That's so. I mean, how come? I don't know. You're going to tech. That's how much he knew. He says, I don't know. Somebody's got to go. You're going to tech. Yeah, all right. Drive Virginia Tech, listening on the radio. And I realize why I'm going to tech. And you know, you, you, you have memories of whatever and things stand out. At this point, I'm on 81 and I'm driving to 81. Ask Stan. I'm, I'm still 90 minutes from Virginia Tech, and I can see this as clear as a bell. I'm in the right lane, going as fast as I can. And as black, we had a Ford, we had a Mercury Mountaineer SU, our, our first one. And I'm in a, we, we had company cars. I'm in my company. And I'm driving this. Right up to the edge of where I thought I'd get a speed station. And this Blacksburg cop, somewhere between Stanton and Rono, I do not know where, this Blacksburg, Virginia Police Department car blew by me. That dude must be wrong, 100 miles. He blew by me. And I remember thinking, good Lord. You know, an explorer is not that, it's not a human, but it's still bigger than a car. And I, that guy's really going to drive that mass that fast. He, I mean, you've been passed by speeders. And your car has to, the, the, the wind, the wind in the wake of that car just buckets your car. That's how fast this dude was going. And I'm listening to the radio as the thing escalates. When I get in the plane that day, when I got there, that might have been the second or third time I was on the Texas campus. Every other time you've been to a football game, you just go straight to the state. Also basketball. 
but you go straight to the stadium, straight to, and it was just, it was dreary anyway. And it was a soul, just cops blocking intersections. And we didn't have cell phones. And it, I'm, I'm ignorant. I have no idea what, I don't know what's going on. I just, so I take pictures of cops and intersections. This, this, the Thomas Dispatch had a state system and had photographers throughout the state. The Roanoke were reporters throughout the state. The Roanoke reporter and the uh, Charlottesville Bureau reporter, both of them were there. And I never saw them. I don't think I saw them the entire time. Wound up staying three days, had to buy some clothes from Walmart, had to buy everything Walmart, or clothes, underwear, deodorant, everything. So, um, That's what I like about news. I mean, I, that's a horrible thing. To, but that was the appeal of newspapers to me. Because you can wake up in the morning and don't know where you're going that afternoon. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off from this story, but I, I, I would be interested to know um, what your favorite assignment was. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be in there. Uh, the picture, and it's it, it's not a. It's also a shot on this piece of. I'll put a lens on this. Pass this around. I, I, this will be on the internet, so I'm not going to say the word that begins with S, ends with a T. <laughs> that is a piece of that kind of stuff. <laughs> a stink. What is it? Wash your hands. <laughs> a steaming pile of that kind of stuff. That is a Nikon NC two thousand E. And yeah. when they do the autopsy on me, they gonna find bruises on my kidneys. <laughs> That was our first digital camera. I can't tell you. I still hate that. <laughs> <laughs> that one, well, those two followed me home after a lot of newspaper. Well, y'all ain't gonna y'all ain't gonna me up. One of a few things from the newspaper followed me home when they were discontinued. And I have two of those. Neither of them work. Sealed battery. Hang on. Sealed battery. I don't remember what you call a card. The card went in here. Uh, the card was so big it had a disc in it. That's how big the card was. Wow. We got those in 94, 95. My favorite is the picture, other than pictures of my kids, pictures of my grandkids, is in there. It's when Bill Clinton gave Oliver Hill the presidential medal. It's right behind you, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When he gave Clinton, when Clinton gave Hill the Presidential Medal of Freedom, that's my favorite picture of all the news, all out, all, 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 just because of person. Um, all right, let me show you also. Oh, you had this. I'm sorry. Um, when you were working for the newspaper, did you? Wait for an assignment, just go to work every day and wait for an assignment, or did you go occasionally out on your own to get images? Yeah, we called it enterprise. We called it enterprise. And if you had some downtime, and I probably got some pictures, every paper calls there. We called it enterprise. And basically, you're just looking for slices of life pictures. In Richmond, if y'all if y'all remember reading the TV or the leader, they ran pictures of people swinging on the river, dogs. Well, yeah, question. Each reporter put an assignment in for you know whatever for whatever it was. Went over to the photo department. The boss decided based on the schedule I described to y'all, and if we had the bodies to. So when you came, when he left that evening at 6, at 6.37, he had already made, at the least, he had already made, P.A. Wong's 
was my boss most of that time. He had already made the assignments for the day. So you knew when you left what you wanted to do with that state. And you know, you could prepare for it. You knew that. You need to wear jeans or better put a tie in your pocket. Whatever you need based on based on what's happening. Um oh yeah, pictures. I have a question. Yeah. It's maybe the switch to digital. Did the switch to digital in any way impact or change your approach to the photojournalism? Yeah, because of the that camera's a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's slow. And by slow, I mean responsiveness slow. It was not as fast as a film camera. Um, it was a 1.5 crop factor. So a 24 millimeter lens, I forget the math, but, a, but, but what, the perspective of a 50 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter format with that 1.4 something factor, crop factor, 1.5 crop factor, it made a 50 millimeter, a 50 millimeter lens had the perspective of about a 38 millimeter lens. Because the other way, the other way. Because the 1.5 crop factor gives you a narrower view. Like a zoom. Like a zoom. So 50 would be more like a zoom. Yeah, you know, right. I'm sorry, I went the long way. You're right. A 50 would be a 70 something. So we had to get 17 millimeter lenses. They were. Oh, I should have brought them. Uh, we had to get 17. We had a 17 to 24 zoom. 17 millimeters would approximate a 24 uh, millimeter on a film. Yes, that effect. First time the None of us had even, it, it just hadn't occurred to us as a staff covering the NASCAR race. You shoot your, used to be, you shoot your film, go, somebody was a runner, and they would go wherever the photographer was, grab their film, you reload, and your film would get sued. Somebody was in there editing, and they would edit your pictures, transmit them back to the, transmit them back down. And you, you kept a pocket full of pens, or you had to um, to uh, not had the packs for your, your motor gun. When that thing died, you didn't have a camera. You that's how it affected your work. You didn't have a camera no more because the camera didn't work, and you had to plug it up, get a charge as long as it took to charge. Um, it was slow. You couldn't shoot quite. Good. Something about that, I can't speak to it, the technical part. White people came out with a salmon and cut And Photoshop, the state of Photoshop at the time, I, I, my skills, I couldn't get a decent skin tone out of color people. Out of color people. Then color people. Black people were just fine. Black people, it did black people better than, than them did black people. I, and I suspect because of the red and darker skin. I don't know what else to, I don't know what else to, to blame her. You couldn't shoot fire. Flames came out orange. And again, the limitations of the software, just you couldn't recover, you couldn't get natural colors out. The only good thing about that camera we only had them for about a year. <laughs> now, this thing is this hybridization that Kodak and Associated Press made and coupled this uh, thing to a Nikon D N90S camera box. Um, in About a year later, Nikon came out with Nikon came out with the D1. It was based on a D4 uh, camera, uh, excuse me, an F4 camera body 
camera body, but it had digital guns. You notice this thing doesn't have a monitor on it. I ain't proud to say this, but we of all the, that, the monitors have become, they're invaluable. You can see who's the brand. See whether the pictures of folks. Um, this thing doesn't have. This thing doesn't have. We were when these came. The, uh, Bruce Parker got the first one, eighteen thousand dollars. When we got when when they bought the rest of them to the rest to the rest of us, they were down to fifteen or fourteen, and that was like less than a month later, be five months. Because they wanted to, they, they wanted to see what was happening before they dropped that much. Mm -hmm. Now I, I, you didn't have to lug around dark. We had a portable dark room in a suitcase. This little cheap little Russian enlarger, <laughs> tanks, water fill, tanks, reels, trays. Somehow or another, somebody. It made this thing up so you could develop. Initially, it was set up to it's color or black, white doesn't matter. You carried your chemicals, you found a motel room, put your, put your dark room in the tub, put a towel on the floor to keep it light from coming in under the bathroom door, and that was your dark room. But you could take those negatives, scan, and we had digital film scanners. Scan the, scan the negative and transmit it. Didn't have to do that with this thing. Just pop the card in the computer and through, through Photoshop, you had your picture and you could send it on wherever you had to go. Now, what year was that? 94, 6, right in there. Um, uh, once we got D1s and they had. I think they had compact flash cards. I'm not sure. They had that monstrosity of a card. Oh, yeah. I remember that. That was a lot easier. Um, and the camera was better. This thing compared to anything. This thing is just terrible. It's awful. I cannot stress <laughs> to you how bad of a camera this is because it never, it did not, it wasn't as good as Smith. But you can't stop the march of progress. If this was going to be, this was the future. I first, I don't recognize none of y'all, so if you know somebody that's on the newspaper, tell them. You can imagine what I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had waited those 18 months, those 12 months, but nobody knew. To be fair, nobody knew. I wish we had waited until a D1 came out and never used this. But Len, um, just a friendly reminder, we have about 10 more minutes left. Oh, um, I'm sorry, I could be. Or <laughs> um, This is my website. There we go. Some of these are digital. Some of these are films. This was a kid's fashion assignment. <laughs> and they were had, all the girls had shown up and whatever it was they were going to wear was some farm somewhere. And the uh, 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 Mary Mitchell, the graphic artist at the newspaper, she was going to corral the kids and design the picture and all of that. And the little girls ran off to look at a horse. That's that's that ran. That was the lead picture to the assignment. Can we enlarge the pictures? I don't know. Can you make it? <laughs> you got your phone or your put it at photography.com. Look it up on your phone. Uh, it's all along. I feel like I'm in church. So you know what? Oh, okay. Um. This you can you can the, the the government the federal government gets horses from 
out west, wild horses, the ones that are healthy enough, they will send them to people. You can adopt them. Somebody in Hanover adopted a wild animal. This thing got loose around uh, Hanover Airport and animal control. They finally cornered this thing, shot it with a tranquilizer dart. I learned a lot doing this job. If you ever get shot with a tranquilizer dart, they got to hit you with something else or whatever it was that knocked you out or killed. They have that needle in her hand is the medicine to counteract whatever it is, that anesthetic thing that's going to kill the horse if they don't give it, if they don't knock it down. My God, three hours chasing that horse. <laughs> and boy, have I got some stories. Well, you know, that's oh, so much fun. <laughs> I had a lot of fun in that show. I'll tell you. <laughs> Boy, did I have a lot of fun. I ain't rich. I got a lot of stories. Um, I don't know. That was some play at the, uh, uh, can't think of the name of the theater, or Broad, West Broad, before you get to Belvedere, about princesses and fairies or something. That's in the lobby. Some little girl about to go into the play. Uh, we We did restaurant reviews and had to Photograph the food. Somebody asked me about feature pictures. Just drive around looking for a slice of rock, slice of life, whatever in Richmond. There's a rope hanging from a trestle down around, um, not on Browns Island, but right there, kind of below Tredegar, and people swing on that rope. Uh, been there for years. This guy collect uh, was a pigeon. Fancier. He raced pigeons. Maggie Walker. We weren't instructed what to shoot. We had the freedom. Thank God. We had the freedom to cover the assignment. We were given guidelines to stay within. And of course, get the you know, get a headshot of the main speaker, but look for something interesting that's going to be. These are kids going into the mosque to graduate. Uh, Maggie, I think, Maggie Walker students. Uh, VCU, friends, friends of a VCU student that was murdered. I, these are shadow puppets. Interesting, these folks are behind a, 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 a translucent screen, puppeteers. But the puppets are appear as silhouettes, and these folks manipulate. It's looking up on the interwebs. It's in, it was just really interesting. Hanover County. Somebody was trying to. You can hunt with dogs, and somebody in some group in Hanover. Hanover has gotten suburbanized, and they were trying to make that illegal. And these people. The people who, and they want to hunt with dogs. If you don't know why I took this picture, <laughs> this, some, this guy was at a commemoration of Jeb Stewart. I didn't say a word. I just like, and it was just me and him, if you want to get a sense of the demographic. Make up of that. <laughs> and I, I didn't ask this dude's name. I didn't. I thought some. Th I thought of some things to say. And and my first would the first word I would if I had spoken to that man the first word I would have used would have begun with an N. All right. <laughs> Why are you here? But that's that's. Uh, yeah. Is it still Yeah. No. I don't. No. No. It's got stars and bars crossed with the oh. U.S. flag. It must be some uh, historical uh, uh, or reenacting. Drive in and uh, in Goochland. Yeah. Was that part of a reenactment? No. 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 It was a commemoration of 
some Confederate memorial, some commemoration at a at a, a Hollywood Cemetery. Uh -huh. Veterans Day. Right along with some city cops and ATF agents. Yeah, yeah um, uh, back to the, that flag picture. You said you didn't ask his name. I was just wondering, when you took photographs of people where they're clearly identified? We're supposed to. Okay. We're supposed to. Mm -hmm. But you could get away with it in a crowd. You could get away with not getting an ID of a crowd. You could get away with... Uh, uh, if the situation just didn't allow for you to speak to the people, or you get his name. If an actor, if an actor had asked me why did I get his, why didn't you get his name? And at that point, I had some tenor. I would have expressed to that editor why the H E double hockey sticks I didn't get this you know what's name because I, I wasn't going to do it. Yo, there's a question about getting names. Uh, we have a couple. Of People here, including myself, who enjoy street photography, and particularly, you know, when I go out on the street, I don't typically approach the person and ask for identification or whatever. So, my question to you: You know, you said you're supposed to get their names. Was that because of the journalism mm -hmm. part of it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 the tradition. Every newspaper has its tradition. The tradition of uh, the pop Policy. policies. Richmond newspapers. If you can identify the person, get their name. That was you know that was that was the newspaper's policy. Mm -hmm. um, Is that like the release that we had? No 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 no. If you're an adult, you say yes. Because as I understand it. One of y'all was, one of y'all got shoehorned into, or excuse me, got lassoed into being the, the uh, lawyer for the group. As I understand it, you gave me your consent. I don't need a release if you, as an adult, said, I've identified myself. I didn't trespass. Doesn't matter if you're trespassing. I didn't trespass. I can photograph anybody any, from, from, from a public space. I can photograph any, anybody, anywhere, for any reason, and I don't need your permission. The polite thing to do is ask. Um, and we tried to uh, drive along with some city cops at ATF agents. This guy, that's his lawyer on the right. This poor dude was accused of murdering his brother. Um, he didn't do it, and some money and family and... Uh, and that's where his brother's body was found. This is on the Eastern Shore chicken catchers. You can't tell, but he's wearing cut off pantyhose, cut it off at the thigh, panty, cut it off at the ankle, and put the leg on your arms, do the same thing with a pair, put them over your feet. And if you ever seen a chicken house, they're huge. And they go in the chicken house and grab chickens and uh, grab chickens and put them in the pens. And those pens go on those, you've seen them on the highway. That's how they catch them. The story was about the fact that these Virginia chickens are going to Russia to get processed. Excuse me, they're going to, they're being sold in Russia and the economic, the economic economics of the most, I can speak to you superficially about damn near anything. <laughs> the economics in Virginia and what's going on, uh, some of what's going on. Another enterprise picture, kid, it was raining. His kid's having a ball. You were supposed to imitate a chicken. <laughs> I think I, I, I don't know. Don't, don't, don't. I'm not sure about that, but I think this guy won so many times. He they wouldn't. He kept showing up, and he kept. But they they wouldn't let him. He won too many times for them to give him a. <laughs> he became a chicken chicken imitator emeritus. Uh, science museum. Santa had a biplane. 
another another memorial for a murder victim. This is this is the rock before he was the rock, uh, uh, when he was still wrestling. Chess club at Stewart Elementary School. Um, this is Gettysburg. I had the best job in the world. This is from the front seat of a Red Baron stunt plane, acrobatic stunt plane group that travels around the country and does, does whatever. I had the best job in the world. I don't know what this is. Uh, uh, elementary school teacher, I forget the story. Elementary school teacher leading her kids. This is the kind, you asked about somebody. We're supposed to get featuring kind of slice of life. Hopefully, this is, this is supposed to make you stop and read the story. Lewis okay. Ginter and the, the, the um, they went to the Lewis Ginter, some group with picture frames and found, and as you walk along the trails to pass at Lewis Ginter, you'd see art. They, they, they had isolated a piece of the garden as, as, as art. Uh, Reenactors at uh, Jamestown. At Jamestown. Again, waiting. As soon as you get out of your car, start shooting. I'm there to shoot some event. But before the event started, these folk, before it was these folks' turns, they're tuning up. Special Olympics. That's this this uh, young woman is this dude's older sister. Um. Over at well, one, no, it's UPS now. Um, they were the uh, partner to an elementary school, and they came to this elementary school for their field day. Hi, is this just a black ballerina legs feet? Oh, okay. Uh, let me go to. Uh, This is in Afghanistan. Um, just people in a crowd, people in a crowd. We were in Afghanistan in 2004. Kosovo with a D1, not this. Uh, uh, embedded with US troops who were there to keep the peace. Yeah. Were you doing that? Were you uh, with a news service or an agency or with with the TD with the Thompson Dispatch? Oh, this was the yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Peter ba ba Peter Bakke was a reporter. We had a um a, a, a minder, a media, a public information person. Uh, this is Army, uh, who was our escort, and we 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 followed different units doing whatever it was they do in that place. I, when we went to Afghanistan, uh, 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 Meredith Bonnie and I went to Afghanistan, Frank Green and I went to Iraq. We were embedded with specific units and we followed them. Our job was to photograph and report on what they were doing. In both cases, they had a Virginia connection. The Afghanistan and Iraq had a, had a Virginia connection. This is Iraq. This is Kosovo. If you ever get the chance, when it, the lottery gets up to a billion dollars, find yourself a Black Hawk helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you got that kind of money to throw away, buy a Black Hawk helicopter. <laughs> Afghanistan, I, it was, is one of the most mined countries in the world. Still is. Still is, yeah. This group is based in Richmond, they're reservists, they're trainers, and they train soldiers, U.S. soldiers, and they train foreign armies on how to set up an HR system, basic police function. Their, their, their responsibility is to train across the spectrum of what an army might have to do. 
These guys, this was a session to train Iraqi, new Iraqi soldiers on basic, basic police type of procedures. Riding in the back of a Humvee on a, a, a they call them presence patrols at like one o'clock in the morning. You people ask about fear and being afraid of these things. The only thing about being in Afghanistan that scared me was before we went, had to get a rabies vaccine. Yeah, ooh, I don't know who said ooh, but I, had rabies? Yeah, you need a rabies vaccine. We're walking along, this is, uh, God, what was the name? I forget the name of the community, the town. Um, you can hear dogs. You can't see the dogs, but you can hear these dogs barking off in the distance as we walked along the street at one o'clock in the morning. Glad I had that rabies vaccine. Uh, this is a bombed, they called it a palace uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in Iraq. These guys did convoys. It might have been this guy. I remember asking the guy how long he had worked, and he couldn't remember. They worked seven day, six days a week, and whatever their seventh day was was a half day. These guys worked their tails off, uh, providing uh, protection, running convoys. This was in Kosovo. Um, we're at a radio station. Bakke is still in the studio talking to the people, and I walk out because I... Only so much you can shoot him a disc jockey. And this kid's sitting on the roof of his uh of his of his home. That's inside a Humvee. <laughs> Afghanistan, the opening re the reopening of a major highway. Uh looking up at a 50 caliber of uh, the machine gun. I'm in the passenger seat looking up. This guy's in the turn. Another daytime presence patrol. Kids just, kids just come out of nowhere. You, this is what Afghan people look like. And every once in a while, you'll see a little white boy, a little white girl. And you, well, where'd this kid come from? The, he's the grandchild of a Russian soldier from the 90s. Again, this is an orphanage in Afghanistan. Same orphanage. You can't, this piece of trash, blue piece of trash, and their footwear, the only thing that in that picture, without looking any closer, the only thing in that picture to let you know it was taken in the 20th century. That's, I, I'm not going to say backward because what's right for you is what's right for you. Technologically, yeah, that's, and this is a bunch of, all of it. We, we, we have survived without it and they don't have it. It doesn't make them better, it doesn't make us better or worse. That's not the point. My point is that's what that place once you got out of Kabul, Ghazni, that's where we were. Once you got out of Kabul, once you got out of Ghazni, that's what Afghanistan, the, the, the sliver of Afghanistan I saw, that's what it looked like. That was Iraq, Iraq. Uh, 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 again, in a, training people, uh, the administrative, this guy's a pilot on the left, the administrative parts of running an airport. That's something the army does. That's when the guys came home from uh, uh, Afghanistan, the, the, the folks we were embedded with. This is uh, a year later when they came home to, to uh, Fort Bragg. Well, how long were you there? Both embeds were a month. Iraq was three weeks. Um, no, Iraq was over three weeks and Afghanistan was three weeks. 
Um, we've enjoyed your presentation and we're just so glad you're able to come and be here with Thank us. Thank you. And I'm sorry I talked too much, <laughs> but I talked too we much. Love The new website is uh we just oh it's Clement Britt yeah Google that Google that Google that yeah. well, we have two uh two, two awards for you one like this is our world famous what's it? I believe it's Thomas Edison High School in Alexandria. My granddaughter will steal this. <laughs> <laughs> this will be going to Alexandria. This will be going to Fairfax County uh, and be in a backpack next month. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, we're going to move on to photo share. Does anybody submit anything? Yeah. You're welcome to stay. Good. Hey, right. One of these days, you got to do a similar type of presentation about your life as a photo general. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of fun. It, it, it is a lot of fun. Um, did I ever show? I show you the great picture that Holly told a showed of uh, Nelson Rockefeller. You've all seen that shot. Rockefeller was oh, he was going to New York, and he was uh, thinking about running for president, and so he came to a local university, and the students were heckling him. You know what he did? He went to Lou. You know what happened? A colleague got that photograph of him doing exactly that, and it ran across the country. <laughs> I have no idea what it did for his political career, but it was just a great, great. It was one of those, yeah, the right place, the right time, the right instincts, because you could see he was getting angrier and angrier. That's what he did. And he loved it. And he you know, did that. It's crazy. But that was one of my favorites. Okay, we got some photo shares. All right. Okay, so, Nancy. We'd like to know that Ginger Bar was in the, the tree in the water. I was a lot of reflection she got so recently. Ginger Bar, obviously. Same day, flower. Anita, I, I was able to. Oh, did you look ahead? Yes. Okay. Uh, I see him. Did you just pull your lens back, Nancy? Or yeah, that would be the town. That would be the town. Yeah. And you just walk back? You, you walk back? Or do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the camera. Or you're the one saying, cool. Very nice. I'm all the exposure with some lights. Um, I never got there to see the lights of kids, but uh, they hadn't taken them down yet either by the conservatory and uh, on the ground. I just think it's five or six years old. Uh -huh. I got lucky with a squirrel. <laughs> uh, that's a uh, governor's antiques, <laughs> rusty old quarry the headlights. Did you what how did you process that in a few? Um just black and white and sketch. Yeah, like a very, very grainy to the crusty image itself. I think I did a little uh, sketch lighter, I think, but I'm not sure. And I think I put a texture on it. Very nice. But I'm not hundred percent sure. 
<laughs> well, I never take fear. Yeah. Look at the picture of a person. I took it. <laughs> it's almost a person. Well, that is a uh, BMFA, it's a reflection uh, of a woman walking by. Um, it wasn't that hard, was it? It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Looking up on a cloudy day. Pretty small leaves on the ground. That's a cell phone shop. Nice. Uh -huh. Oh, this is me. Things that aren't there anymore. This is that old factory that was on the south end of uh, Mayo's Bridge, right across Hull Street Road from where the Southern States Towers are. It, now it's been demolished and it's gone, but I did manage to get some pictures of the interior of that. Okay. Um, covered with graffiti, roof falling in, with floors falling in. And let me guess, video, you're known for trespassing, <laughs> right? <laughs> Technically, I suppose, yes. That's <laughs> <laughs> one of the upper floors. Somebody stretched all of this barbed wire all around. Oh, that's cool. There's the stairs. Or all these rooms were covered with homeless people's abandoned belongings and uh, graffiti, and the Fulton gas works, which are also not, they were knocked down about a year ago, I think. Could have been two years, I don't know, I can't keep track, but there's a, a shot of the old gasometer. Hmm. Uh, the interior of the uh, gas works with all the, the old equipment that they used to process the gas that they would manufacture. It's uh, quite an operation that they had. The, uh, there's a shot into the interior from the outside. There's the inside where they actually made the gas. Those were Boilers, what they used to do is blow steam through beds of burning coal, and what would come off would be a mix of hydrogen and carbon monoxide that would go in the gasometer and then be distributed out to uh, consumers. It was uh, a wild and woolly time. Uh, when they could do that, there's a shot. That's the that's the old factory at the end of Hull Street uh, or at on Hull Street, uh, looking out over the uh, flood wall with all the graffiti on it, and the city of Richmond on the other side of the river. Hmm. It's all gone now. It's all gone. How old were those shots? Uh, Fulton Gas Works, uh, a year or two. Okay. The other one, uh, maybe four or five years. Right. Yeah, that's my, uh, my picture from uh, Liberty Hill Park looking down uh, Main Street at, uh, I think it's like Blue Hour. Uh, 
uh, uh, Kamala Plaza at the Christmas time mm -hmm. this year. Uh, and that's a picture of the skyline from the flood wall. And there's my uh, Louis Ginter picture from uh, the Garden Fest of Lights. And that's a picture that I took at the uh, Branch Museum a couple of weeks ago. And it was just uh, lucky that I got her. Yeah, nice. It does, this is. Starting with mine now. Uh, these I took last month when I was down in Daytona for the Rolex 24. And this one I wanted to show the, the this is one of the, the teams that's just for the Michelin pilot series. But the, the young fellow on the right there is 19 years old. He was one of the pilots. And then this one. And here's another driver. Here he's 78 years old, <clears throat> and they were running in the the same race. Kemp, did you have to get permission to get down that close? Or no, oh. no they have what they call a red walk before it starts, where you can walk them and mingle among the drivers. How did they do uh, at the race? Those two. Uh, I, I don't years. recall how they finished. Well, hopefully they finished. So. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and and yeah, speaking of hoping that finish, this was during the race, and uh, one of these guys was going the wrong way. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now this was uh, a couple of days later. This was this is before the beginning of the actual twenty four hour Rolex twenty four race, and that's the starting grid out there on the uh, in the pit lane. There was a lot. There was sixty-two cars started that race. Hmm. This was the start of the prototype red cars, and as they went into the first turn, and uh, and then the GT cars, which started you know, a little group, a little bit behind them, but then they all raced together. So these these cars are. The first ones are capable of a little over 200 miles an hour. These are capable of about 175. So there's a little bit of a difference in the in the, the speed of them. And they're capable of, do they actually reach those speeds? Yes, yes, they do, they do there at Daytona, they actually reach those speeds because of the, the high bank turns and everything. <laughs> And uh, that is a very expensive Cadillac. <laughs> Too bad it's not faded. <laughs> and this was during the night. Uh, it's, it's, I took a, um, we couldn't have a tripod or anything like that, so I had a little clamp to clamp onto the handrail and put the camera on that. And then I think it's like a 10 second shot so you can see where how far the cars are going in 10 seconds by the streak of their lights. And uh, that's another Cadillac. And this is uh, Bruce Murphy. Oh, well, Bruce isn't here, but I was gonna say that's Bruce. <laughs> uh, that's street, street vendor. The title of this one. This is Mandy. Nice. Oh, oh Peter, these are yours. These are mine. Um, into uh, patterns and colors recently. And this is obviously downtown. I don't know the building, but uh, I think that's the James Center. Could be the James Center. I just like the I just like the colors and the patterns. Great picture. And Nancy and I have been out doing reflections occasionally, and this is just another reflection. I like all of the reflections. 
um, traffic lights. We see something or other. More patterns, more color. This is just plain color and patterns. There's a there's a place, and I have no idea exactly where it is. It's somewhere down in VCU territory, but it's got this great red wall and these windows. And you'll notice the top are the same, but why is one window shorter than the other? I I couldn't figure that out. I like the reflections, and I, but I like the patterns, but I have, it just doesn't make any sense. Again, down in the same area of DCU territory, I just like the yellow contrast with the green and the patterns. And we know what that is, the Contemporary Art Museum from across the street. And this is uh, over by the Marco building. Again, more patterns. It says community center, but I just got it to say unity center, unity center. And this one, <clears throat> I've gone to a lot of the BC on the uh, U of R Women's Festival events. And this one is called Hairball. Because <laughs> 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 I, I just, I, I couldn't do any better than that as far as hair. <laughs> And this one is called Ouch. <laughs> uh, those are good opportunities for people shots. I don't, I don't know who else has gone, but you can get right down practically courtside. And if you, you can shoot right up at the kids playing. And if you're lucky, you get an ouch once in a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, go to uh, themes. If you notice in the last newsletter, Tom and I talked about trying to come up with themes for the entire year instead of throwing them at you once in a while so you can plan your photography. And this, <clears throat> I'll send this out so you don't have to memorize it or write it down. But uh, for March, concentrate on coming in with some black and white stuff, either shot that way or post-processed. But love to see black and, a black and white day. April, making music, anything you can. It can be your granddaughter playing a flute. It can be a concert. It can be anything that is making music. May on the street. Okay, Ed, that's for you. Uh, yes. And again, anything. Um, I often suggest festivals of some kind or another because those are a great way to get people to cooperate and give you a big smile and so forth. But something on the street. Doesn't necessarily have to be people, but something from your wanderings. Uh, getting close up. Again, doesn't have to be macro. It would be great if you want to try some macro stuff, but close up of anything. Seeing red. This is uh, it's like the shot I had of the building with the red building. Doesn't have to be all one color, but it should be a should be shots where one color predominates. So you just so when you look at it, you immediately see oh yellow or whatever. So buildings, a quilt, whatever. Um, August, slow shutter, like Kemp's shot of the cars in motion. Try some slow shutter stuff. Or if you want to try intentional camera movement to get the same effect, go right ahead. September, doorways. Doorways, windows, porches, something that says, Come on in and welcome home. October, happy or sad? Uh, doesn't have to be a picture of somebody smiling or somebody crying. 
couldn't be something that makes you happy or sad, but something that evokes one of those emotions. November in the country, get out of town, do some landscape, do some nature, do something outside. December, how's the weather? Well, we want to see rain, we want to see fog, we want to see snow, we want to see something. Hot sun, some weather shots. And next January, poof, in the details. Um, details of anything. Details of a building, details of downtown architecture, details of your hat, details. So you've probably always already got a lot of that kind of stuff in your files, I would suspect. And I'm looking at Anita and thinking, okay, she's got stuff and she's going to do something with it to make it look different. But I hope that helps. And thinking in terms of, uh, uh, gee, what can I come up to with for photo share? This will give you some thoughts on, uh, oh, you know, I'm going to go out and shoot red. Okay, well, there's Leo in his red shirt. Let's get Leo in his red shirt. Okay, I hope that helps. I will send that out. Or it is in the newsletter. And speaking of the newsletter, I'm looking. Yay. I'm looking for stuff. Our photographer of the month next month is going to be Pat, and she's already got me a bunch of stuff in her copy, so that's great. And if you would like to, I've talked to a couple of others about volunteering, and and uh, this is not a brag thing. It's just getting to know who you are and what you like to take pictures of and how you got there. So, and we have some photo share today and I'm going to say, is there anything there? Because I'm going to ask Kemp for permission to steal some of those to use in the next newsletter. Does anybody have a problem with that? Okay, because I saw some nice things from Nancy and so forth, favorite shots and so forth. So I'm just going to assume that if you're willing to show them here, you're willing to have them in the news better. Is that a good assumption? Okay. Peter, I just wanted to remind you um, if we're going to exhibit at a local library. Yep. We have two. I have talked to two volunteers who said they would help. So we'll get that underway. We don't, we don't win? No, we don't know when. I have to talk to those two uh, volunteers and find out. Sorry, I missed what you said earlier. Are you talking about an exhibit? Yeah, okay. library exhibit. I'll, I'll be happy to talk about something like that. Yep. I just volunteered you. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll track that down. And other than that, that's it. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you next month. Thank you. And get stuff in for the newsletter. It's you know, your favorite photographs, it's your, the world we've seen with our camera, it's something that's stupid or funny, send me stuff. You did a great job, Peter. Thanks. It's your newsletter, it's your newsletter and you all have something you want to brag about. I have to, I have to believe that. <laughs> well, we've been asked to leave the chair as they are for the next meeting, so uh, 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 u